Back in the day, 60,000 people lived here, approximately. Today, 4.2 million people. In your lifetime, actually by the time you're my age, there'll be another couple million people in Puget Sound. Can we build it correctly so it's more sustainable and eventually completely sustainable? There's about a hundred fascinating research questions inside that bigger question. Here's a few ideas to jot down. Water quantity in Puget Sound. Will we have enough of the snowpack remaining in 2040, 2050 to supply all the water needs for these people? Just will we have enough water? Water quality. Will the water that we have access to be polluted? Or can we work backwards from the source to have less polluted and then no pollution in our water? Water temperature. As the globe heats up a little bit, the water will heat up a little bit. Will that affect certain species like salmon? Habitat loss from the mountains and the forests to the riparian zone, to the main stem river, to the estuary, to the near shore habitat, to Puget Sound itself. How can we hold on to habitat? Will species go extinct? There's, there's several in Puget Sound that are on the verge of extinction. That has to be a research question. How can we develop a plan over the next several decades to reverse that process? Can we have less toxics in our environment? They're accumulating in the biomass. It's called bioaccumulation. Can we reverse that in the kinds of products we accept in our household or from our businesses? Ocean acidification. The amount of CO2 being pumped into the air, it also is getting absorbed by the ocean. It's changing the pH balance and the shell formation of shellfish is not as strong. They're weaker. If ecological systems begin to falter and fail, what happens to economic systems? Let's look at the economic value of Puget Sound. 71% of all jobs in this state are right here in Puget Sound. 77% of the total income generated in this whole state comes out of Puget Sound. The container traffic, those big, big ships that are bringing all kinds of products. If you combine the Port of Tacoma and the Port of Seattle, it represents about $28 billion in economic activity each year. There's 76 parks because it's a beautiful place. Generates about $9.5 billion in economic value. The shellfish industry, if you combine the commercial shellfish industry with the recreational shellfishing, about equal parts, you get 86 million total dollars coming through our economy. Fishing, same thing. The commercial fishing industry and the recreational fishing industry, which is huge, about 61 million dollars in economic activity. Will it collapse? You clearly see the relationship between the ecological integrity of Puget Sound and the economic integrity of Puget Sound. What do we have to work with? Well, we have some tools. Number one, critical thinking. We can analyze it, we can break it down, we can do the science, we can think it through, we can analyze the policy frameworks. With a little creativity, we can solve the problem. Critical thinking, creative problem solving, and we need to work together. The government can't do it. You couldn't possibly pay enough taxes to the government to do it. That's not a system that's going to work by itself. Volunteers can't do it. School groups can't do it, not alone. Business isn't going to do it. What's their motivation? But if all of these social systems and economic systems and, and, and the players and the actors in these systems collaborate, we can do it. We can do it pretty quickly. Next couple of decades. It's going to take a lot of this. Communicating across generations, across jurisdictions, across community sectors. So what are the leverage points? How would you prioritize action? Here's a thought experiment. Say, this is just proportional, say I have, uh, I have a $2,000 project to clean up Puget Sound, $2,000 in monopoly money or whatever. But you only have 20 bucks to work with. That's, that's how much taxes you have to play with. Huge problem, and actually it's billions, but we only have millions to play with. And you've got to solve it. I've got 20 bucks right here. So let's think about this. What would you do? What would be your first step, second step? You can't fix it all, so you're going to have to prioritize your actions. What would you do? Here are the three priorities from the Puget Sound Partnership. Reduce stormwater pollution. Improve habitat. Protect shellfish beds. 
It's an emergency. If the ecological systems continue to collapse, then our economic systems will collapse and our social systems thereafter. This is the Puget Sound Partnerships tool, Vital Signs Dashboard. Around the edge of that pizza crust, there's six goals approved by the state government. And inside the pizza slices, there's 21 indicators. When you go online, you can click on any one of those and dive in deeper and deeper until you find out what projects are actually being done and also what you can do. Every one of the projects that you're working on now comes through this lens. Your research ideas can come from this, and they really should, and your project results should be attributed back to the Vital Signs dashboard. You need to make a difference. It needs to be measurable. Let's go to work. This is your textbook.